I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. The British may have already nailed Trump on Russia. On tape. No, not that tape. It was the 34th and final paragraph in a long and pretty staid review of the role British spies have played in connecting the dots between the Trump presidential campaign and the Russians. And then, as if it were merely the best available way for Britain's newspaper The Guardian to end its useful but fairly modest story, came paragraph 34. Quoting, one source suggested the official investigation was making progress, quote, they now have specific, concrete, and corroborative evidence of collusion, the source said. This is between people in the Trump campaign and agents of Russian influence relating to the use of hacked material. Oh, shouldn't that have been presented, I don't know, a little more prominently? Quote, specific and corroborative evidence of collusion, quote, between people in the Trump campaign and agents of Russian influence, quote, relating to the use of hacked material. Not only did the Republic not grind to a halt after that, but nobody, not even the Guardian itself, followed up with the appropriate screaming headlines. No screaming headlines, even in light of what Eric Trump had told another British newspaper, the Daily Telegraph, in the wake of his father's impotent missile attack against that Syrian airbase. If there was anything that Syria did the Trump spawn protested too much, it was to validate the fact that there is no Russia tie. No screaming headlines, not even as a British magazine, Prospect, quoted the nation's former chief spy Richard Dearlove as speculating that, quote, what lingers for Trump may be what deals on what terms he did after the financial crisis of 2008 to borrow Russian money when others in the West apparently would not lend to him. No screaming headlines. Even as the Washington Post reported, the FBI did indeed get a judge to issue a FISA warrant, permission under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to track the actions of and communications with Russians by Carter Page, who was the second name Donald Trump ever gave when he was asked who his foreign policy advisors were. No screaming headlines, even though the story that the FBI had sought and gotten a FISA warrant of some kind against somebody directly linked to Trump and or his campaign had been widely reported in non-traditional media ever since the former British member of parliament, Louise Mensch, published a sourced story before the election. No screaming headlines, even though the essence of Mensch's November 7th story was that while looking at suspicious Russian banking activity, foreign intelligence services had tripped over contacts between the Russians and the Trump team, and the FBI needed that FISA warrant because without it, they couldn't even read what, say, the British had apparently come up with. Quoting her story, it is thought in the intelligence community, Mensch wrote in November, that the warrant covers any U.S. person connected to this investigation and thus covers Donald Trump and at least three further men who have either formed part of his campaign or acted as media surrogates. Mench's report was not so much dismissed then as it was ignored. Now Ms. Mench is back, on her own blog, Sunday night. Sources with links to the intelligence community say it is believed that Carter Page went to Moscow in early July, carrying with him a pre-recorded tape of Donald Trump offering to change American policy if he were to be elected, to make it more favorable to Putin. In exchange, Page was authorized directly by Trump to request the help of the Russian government in hacking the election. Well, you have to admit, an audio recording of Donald Trump personally saying he would trade American policy decisions in exchange for nefarious Russian intervention in the election would probably fit The Guardian's 34th paragraph about specific and corroborative evidence of collusion between people in the Trump campaign and agents of Russian influence relating to the use of hacked material. Mench also alleges three Trump associates named in the FBI FISA warrant application, Russian-born former Trump TV spokesman Boris Epstein, former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort, and Carter Page. Quote, a recording exists of all three men discussing the possibility of Page taking the tape of Trump to Moscow as an earnest of good faith. There is a minor dispute over whether Trump himself is also on that tape. So if Mensch is right, there may be two tapes of Donald Trump personally making a promise to a foreign government to help it out if that foreign government broke American laws in order to get him elected here. In the abstract, in the theoretical, that would be treason on tape.
Without endorsing or even agreeing with everything Ms. Mensch has ever reported or suggested, it is noteworthy that where her newest reporting has again been dismissed, three principal criticisms have been raised. First, that she was not exactly right when she was the first to report the FBI had gone to the extreme lengths of seeking FISA warrants against the Trump team before the entirety of the world's mainstream media was even close to the story the Washington Post just got last week. Secondly, there is the disbelief that anybody would be stupid enough to not just leave specific and corroborative evidence of collusion of Trump saying, let's make a deal, but to actually deliberately have created that evidence. Well, if you have seen Carter Page interviewed, you should have no doubt that he is stupid enough to have done something exactly like this. In one interview about the question of whether or not he had ever met the infamous Russian ambassador Kislyak, he managed to contradict himself about five times in about five minutes before finally confessing that he had, with the immortal words, I may have met him, possibly, it may have been in Cleveland. And of course, if you've ever heard Donald Trump talk and forget which country he had attacked the week before, but remember what kind of cake he was eating while he was telling the president of China about that attack, you should also have no doubt that he too is stupid enough and more relevantly, so convinced of his own invulnerability to have done something exactly like this. And indeed, this underscores my repeated contention here that democracy has survived less because of the hard work and dedication of people like you and me who are committed to its preservation and more because of the unfailing and eternal stupidity of those who would destroy it. But lastly, and most importantly, Louise Mensch's story has been criticized because no matter how unfailing and how eternal that stupidity may be, who could ever rise to the position of President of the United States, no matter how insane or paranoid or certain that the ordinary odds that they might get caught did not apply to them? No president would be stupid enough to put it on tape. Richard Nixon, resist. Peace.